Who do you belong to? And who you'll who who will you connect with? If there is a spirit of loving kindness, the emissary, the visitor, the visitor from that spirit said, if you want to work with the spirit of loving kindness, connect, connect strongly with the one that heaven, that God, that goodness and peace, connect strongly with the one that has been sent to you. That's actually how you help the highest spirit. There was a moment in my life when I became shockingly aware of the highest spirit and I was first motivated. First, I was motivated to get near to to connect with, to attach to the one person that I had observed connecting the most deeply with the spirit of loving kindness. I attached to my sent one. And because of that, I got threads of understanding. I got coaching, I got guidance. I was able to hide, to rest, to be sheltered, not so much in a visible, physical way, but I was in a situation where I knew that if I had a conflict or something that I had to figure out, and I wanted answers and guidance from the spirit of loving kindness, being connected with my sent one was a safety, a shelter. Because I knew if I had a problem, there would be resources and instruction and invitations to think and meditate on peculiar or improved ways of looking at things. So who do you belong to? Look, there is a spirit of loving kindness and there has been a visitor that has been sent. And the proofs of that are hundreds of predictions set in writings that all came true in one event. The event was not an earthquake. The event was not a government rising up. The, the event was not a battle victory. The event was a human being. So, the proofs that we've been visited is hundreds of predictions, a peculiar public figure who was publicly executed and then rumored to have been publicly seen across 40 days, and in that time, he was giving instruction for a new way of interacting with the spirit of loving kindness, the designer of the universe, the creator God. And the way of connecting is this peculiar food which is declared as a sacrifice after cleansing consciences in the family. And then after the time of the mystical reconnecting, after that time, there are specific requests presented to the spirit of loving kindness for family business, relationship conflicts, and even the motivation to go out and find hurting people that need comfort, care, labor, service, attention, shelter. Hundreds of predictions of 
public figure publicly executed and rumored to have been publicly seen across 40 days by many people, including 500 people at once, and the giving of peculiar and brand new instructions. And then the third, the third is, this visitor is famous for miracle signs and wonders of every sort. He knew their thoughts. He healed 10 lepers. He multiplied food for 10,000 people. He walked on the water, as was predicted by the Sibylline prophetesses. The Sibylline prophetesses declared that there is one who will walk on the waters. And those women were not Hebrews or Jews. They were long before the Hebrew era, making predictions about the shining white supernatural, dazzling white visitor. Predictions, resurrection from the dead, miracle signs and wonders. But the most amazing one is the visitor can put his supernatural powers on an ordinary commercial fisherman who can walk out and go and heal the physical body, drive off the spirits that, that afflict the mind, and speak wholesome truths. Who do you belong to? The three gifts of Jesus of Nazareth, friend to the human family, the three gifts are the Holy Spirit and power. When he was baptized, there was a visible, tangible event that happened to him. And from that time on, he was displaying supernatural powers. You, every human being, has the invitation and the opportunity to become delighted and filled with the spirit of loving kindness. Everyone, every human being is, is offered, offered the benefit of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The three gifts are number one, the Holy Spirit and power. Number two, the teachings which have been ruined and brushed away by the comfortable humans and by the rich politician kings of Europe, Constantine and the such. They took the meetings out of the homes where people admit their faults and then do the communion and then ask the questions for life business. And instead they go into pretty lecture halls and amphitheaters and temples where the fat politician kings don't admit their faults, don't admit their excesses, but they start a Jesus information business. And you have been being dragged along in the influence of these gatherings that do not cleanse the conscience, do the mystical meal. There is no forgiveness for sins without the shedding of blood. And this meal of putting the declared body and blood of Yeshua, the visitor, the friend inside of us, that literally is the new temple atmosphere but it must be in an atmosphere of a cluster of families, close to visitors, people who are willing to be beaten to death and die now, today, just for the friendship with Yeshua. And the combination of the Holy Spirit freshness, and the sacrifice going into the, the the, the body, 
the eating of the sacrifice and the sharing with the children was celebration. This is the heavenly meal. This is the food of heaven. Yippee! This protects us from the troubling spirits and all of the worries and insanity of this world. Who do you belong to? The three gifts. The Holy Spirit in power. The Apostles' teaching. There's this term of the teachings of Christ. There's about 15 different terms. Okay, it's called the Apostles' teaching, or the teaching of Christ for the New Covenant, or the teaching of the Son of God for the new relationship with the Creator God, or the details of the Gospel that we are called to be obedient to, or the way of life. The early disciples referred to themselves as the way. We are living the way of life as taught by God in human form, God the friend, God willing to be sacrificed for all people. We are following the way of life. So, number one, the Holy Spirit in power. Number two is this: the teachings. Jesus says, if you don't hold to my teachings, you're not really my disciples. You're fakers. You can use the powers of the Holy Spirit and still be anti-Christ. How do you like that? That's pretty funky. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty fascinating. I find this stuff fascinating, personally. The moment that the spirit of loving kindness crashed in on me, I was terrified, horrified for two months straight. And all I wanted was to know what the heck I was supposed to be taught when I was a little kid, five, six years old, because all the stuff of God is not complicated. I keep bumping into these people that want to be all wrapped up in this esoteric wisdom and all of these commentaries about this stuff and that stuff. Well, the early disciples for the first 300 years enjoyed returning to the simplicity of the fact that we have been befriended and we have a set of responsibilities and we have been given a spirit that refreshes all. The Holy Spirit in power, the teachings, the keys to the kingdom, the apostles' teaching, the teachings of Christ for a new covenant, the obedience to the the, to the obedience to the gospel, the way of life that Jesus taught. All of these terms refer to the teachings. Second John, verse eight to eleven. There are Christians who rush ahead and assume leadership and do all kinds of fancy stuff and use the power of the Holy Spirit. There are Christians that don't have God and that are doing a wicked work and shouldn't be allowed to influence your house church. And what is wrong with those Christians? They are not carrying the full teaching of Moshiach, Yeshua, Jesus. They don't have God because they're not carrying all the groovy details, what I like to call the goodies. They're not carrying the goodies that he taught. They don't have God and they're doing a wicked work because they've left a whole bunch of essential details out that are supposed to be enjoyed and repeated with the children. That's why I enjoy the Didache, which is a memorizable little set of instructions that flow right with what Jesus taught. That's why I enjoy Justin Martyr's first apology, because it's an early Christian talking about their day-to-day -day lives and the troubles that they have and the challenges they have and what their practices are. Those are the two, those two books, those two little writings are understood as the most important teachings outside of the canonized New Testament because they show the day-to-day -day life. So, the Holy Spirit in power, the teachings. But then the third thing is people, sent ones. That's the cool thing. You feel in your heart, in your guts, who the strongest eternally connected sent one is that's in your life. 
And Yeshua says, if you want to work with the spirit of loving kindness, connect with, attach to, become twinsies with the one who has been sent to you clearly from the essence of truth and peace and eternity and heaven and all those goody stuff. Connect with, pistuo, attach to, cleave to. The word cleave to means a cloven hoof is two parts that are exactly the same. They're two solid parts, but they're stuck together. It's like a twinsy thing. So if you use that word pistuo, whosoever becomes twinsies with him shall have everlasting life. Whosoever attaches to him Whosoever connects with and clearly is imitating and being like him with him, that person will have an everlasting life. The word believe is kind of awful because in English the word believe is talking about mental agreement with theories. But the word pistuo literally means to become stuck to to become twinsies with. So, I am being challenged to cut back on my interaction and relationship with people. I have layers of businesses that are fascinating and lovely. And those businesses will fly because we are constantly cleansing our consciences and doing the mystical blood sacrifice meal and asking, is there anything that we can do for our customers of our business that will enlighten and encourage and refresh, and refresh them? I mean, I'm excited about living as many lives as possible. I was stupid for the better part of 40 years. I just became learning. I just started learning around 37 to 40 years old. And now, what I taste is so grand that I want to live more lifetimes. I want to be able to be a friend and an encourager and a family member to so many people that just want to live fresh and are not afraid of saying no to laziness or no to personal anger, bitterness, condemnation, hatred, nasty attitudes, selfish attitudes, disrespectful and irresponsible attitudes towards individuals that we have responsibility to, especially children, especially ones of marriage vow. It's an awesome opportunity to live in peace and freshness. And I invite you into this series. The series is serious. World dangers. World dangers. Human dangers. Christianity dangers. Rich folks dangers. The ones who run with me and who enjoy this lovely business, they will be well versed on the dangers of the world, the dangers of the human family, the dangers of Christianity, the dangers of rich folks, which is what we are, and you're able to see this, you are in the rich, fat, comfortable America world. So prepare and consider because this is the time when I hope that I can break away from those who do not stand in serious delight regarding the afterlife 
as more fascinating and interesting than this life. Trauma! All the best to you and yours.